Hey guys, how's it, go how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter from the Bio Dude. Yeah. Uh, you can visit me on the web on my website at www.thebiodude.com. Check me out on Facebook and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And today I am going to show you guys how to set up your Kenyan Samboa Bioactive Terrarium Kit. Now I love Samboas. I like them because they're very easy to take care of. They don't try to latch onto my hand and kill me. And I, I also like the fact that they um, have really neat adaptation the fact that they just can create a uh, uh, very, very, very long burrows, which is what you're going to essentially see um, in your vivarium. There is a network of tunnels that these guys are going to create and only really come out when it comes to hunting, looking for water, or um, when the temperature is just right. And I'm going to show you guys how to create your bioactive setup with my uh, proprietary Terra Sahara Bio Dude Bioactive Substrate. Um, what makes the Sahara so unique is that it does not need a drainage layer. It doesn't need a drainage layer in the aspect of um, it's not meant for biomes that are really wet. The Terra Sahara mimics your rocky type of vegetation um, areas instead of like your sand type of areas, which is what these animals actually live in. Um, it also what makes it uh, unique is the fact that it, it holds all tunnels and burrows, which is imperative when you're keeping an animal that spends 90% of its life in the tunnels that it's constantly creating. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Sahara, I'm going to open up the bag right now. Now, quarter of a cup water, dump it on in. That doesn't seem like much. And it's not, but a quarter cup, of, a quarter cup of water in the Sahara goes a long way. They are gonna dump. Okay, bag number one. Then I'm gonna go to bag number two. Now, I recommend having at least, uh, at least a four-inch layer of depth of the Sahara for it to be most effective. Essentially, what you're going to notice with the Sahara is that it stays wet, um, well, it's a wet, moist at the very bottom layer and close to the middle layer, but it stays completely dry, typically about the first inch of the top, which is really important because when you're dealing with biomes like this, that is exactly how it is. It's going to be very, very dry at the top and very, very rocky. And then as you dig down about a foot, you're going to start noticing moisture pockets, which is where all of your essential um, biological processes, as well as your detrivores, which are your cleaners, are doing their job. So essentially what I'm doing here is I am evenly distributing the substrate. And as you can see here, about I got a good four, uh, four inch layer here with moisture already building up at the bottom, which you can see through the tank. So the next thing that I'm going to do is put in my springtails and isopods. Springtails and isopods are, are one of the major parts of the backbone of, the, of a bioactive tank. Um, besides the different fungi and different bacteria that will uh, show their heads in here to start helping the biological drivers um, to create organic nutrition, your springtails and isopods do the exact same thing. Not only do they break down orga or organic matter, such as shed, um, feces, uh, that, uh, biodegradables, such as your leaf litter, they also go through the soil to create beneficial air pockets. The beneficial air pockets are needed because it prevents compaction, and when you have a compacted substrate, it starts growing bad bacteria, um, which can you know, cause issues with your snake. It also creates humidity pockets uh, as well, um, it also helps with the burrowing capability of the substrate. So for a Kenyan Samboa, I will use large silver springtails um, because they are the hardiest of all springtails and can handle uh, humidity dips to as low as 15 to 10%. And then you have your powder blue isopods. I love these isopods because they are the larger isopods that get about um, a quarter of an inch long. And what these isopods do, they like it dry. So what, so what they're going to break down are your leaves, um, and as they break these things down, they're going to put organic nutrition back into the soil. 
So after we get our base layer down here, um, and all the isopods and springtails are already going all over the place, um, I am now going to start figuring out how I want to lay those little ones tank out. So since these snakes do like to burrow, I'm, well, what I'm really going to try and do is I am going to uh, give them uh, you know, a couple places to hide, but I'm also going to try to build up an area that if your snake wants to get out and bask, um, since Kenyan Sambos like to have a pretty uh, decent hot spot, um, it gives them the, the ability to climb. So I got some of uh, the cork bark here, and then I got a succulent. Now for smaller snakes such as Kenyans, hognoses, succulents do great. Um, but the biggest thing that, you're, that you gotta deal with is you wanna make sure that you get a succulent um, that, that is pretty strong. There are some succulents that if you flick them, um, they just fall apart. Digging it. So you're just gonna <coughs> plant your succulent right in here, right like this. Okay. Now, the biggest thing I want you guys to remember: succulents thrive on neglect. You do not want to water this plant every day. You do not want to water this plant every three days. You want to water this plant once every ten to fourteen days. And when I say water, So after that, I'm going to take some of my Mopani wood here um, to provide a couple more areas to be able to climb. So I'm going to go something right like this. Oh yeah, I can do I like that. So I got the base layout done. I'm going to be putting a small water dish right here uh, as this side is going to be my hot side. So after the water dish is in place. I am then going to take my biodegradables, which is your leaf litter. Now, the biodegradables are the most important part because what they do um, is your springtails and isopods will break them down, and it'll provide organic nutrition into your substrate. As the organic nutrition is put back into your substrate, your isopod, called your isopod, your springtail population will increase. As your springtail and isopod population increases, so does the surface area that they cover, thus breaking down the fecal matter and breaking down uh, the uh, shed and things like that significantly faster while doing the job to maintain the efficacy of the soil. Um, so I'm going to go, just going to do a light layer of leaves here. And what you're going to notice as the tank ages, you're going to notice the leaves get mixed in with the substrate and that's great because what will happen is that will help generate the air pockets like I mentioned before as well as um, you know break down into the middle of the substrate to give your substrate nutrition on all levels if your snake is spending a lot more time up top than in the bottom. So got that oh yeah oh yeah that looks really nice. So. One of the biggest things that I see when people keep Kenyan sand boas is since they have the name sand in it, they like to keep them on sand. Now, I don't really recommend this because just like any animal um, or any snake, excuse me, Kenyan sand boas need a little bit of humidity somewhere to help them shed properly. Whether if it's 10%, 15%, up to 30%, maybe slightly higher humidity at one point throughout the day, it will really help your Kenyan Sambo will have a proper shed. As well as that fact is the humidity pockets throughout the substrate will build up in specific areas of the tank. What will happen is as your heat reaches the, the, to the depths of the substrate with the humidity, that creates a sauna on the inside of the substrate, which is where your Kenyan Sambo is going to be. When you have humidity in the air and you have a nice hot sauna, which your snake is going to love the thermoregulate, through, through osmosis, when your snake exhales, um, uh, just like humans, we lose water. Um, so what that does, it helps rehydrate them. It helps with respiration, um, which helps keeping everything clean upstairs. And like I mentioned, it helps with shedding, which are the three biggest problems that people have when they're keeping a desert animal, or excuse me, a, de a, a desert snake, is they have these animals that are used to being in these really dry biomes but come shed time, they have to yank the snake out and put it into a tub to uh, fill with water to make sure it can shed properly. So uh, that's one of the biggest things to keep in mind when you're dealing with uh, bio, uh, the bioactive 
uh, Terra Sahara. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the little one here. The snake is awesome. Hey, dude. I'm going to put you right here. I'm going to grab the lid. I'm gonna put it right on top. I'm going to, for heating, there are two different ways that you can do this. Um, I got a couple different ways. So I am going to be using a heat dome. Um, I do use heat domes rather often, but I also use the Reptotherm under tank heaters just as often. I typically find these to work really well if you're in the south where it's not as cold, um, but depending on where you live, this is great as a supplemental source of heat, not as the main heat source. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the Reptotherm, I'm going to throw it right here onto the side, right like this, okay? So after it's attached on the side, the heat is going to push through the sides, to creating that sauna that I was telling, to, uh, telling you about, um, as well as helping with the humidity pockets. After I check the humidity to see that if I need more heat, I will then add the heat dome. And what I use to check are my, the Viverum Electronics Digital Thermometer and Hygrometer. I like them because they're accurate to 0.01% or 8 degree, which is really good when you want to make sure that your husbandry is on point. Last but not least is the LED. Oh yeah. It's simple, but still looks really nice. Because when people have animals like this, they have sand with a water dish with a hiding cave that your snake is never gonna use. What I've created here um, is basically a bunch of, uh, is, is the, the hardscape, which is your woods, that gives your snake the ability to come out and bask if he wants to bask while giving him everything that he needs to do what he loves to do while making your husbandry and life a lot easier. That's what the dude's about. Again, guys, my name is Josh Halter. I am the owner and founder of The Bio Dude. You can visit me at thebiodude.com. Again, thank you very much for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. The Dude Abides. Burrow. Look at her go. And, and, and if you can see on the side, so you can see it starting. And what, and what you guys will notice is as she creates her burrows, it'll keep everything. And you'll just see the burrows throughout the entire thing. So if you guys know the old Exoterra um, ma magnetic caves that you would attach on the side of your cage, and you'd pull the front off and you'd see all the, all the tunnels, the, the substrate just naturally does that for you.